Well, it looks like the bankers are complete and utter bankers, if you know what I mean. Let's begin. Well, let's just dive into the dramatic world of modern banking, shall we? It's not like your typical thriller, but when it comes to tech hiccups, it sure gets the adrenaline pump, but doesn't it? Because can you imagine just looking at your phone and seeing nothing? But of course, you know, as we all know, we're in the era of modern and trusty banking wrapped up in these fancy mobile apps, right? Well, it's apparently meant to be our portal into the world where our finances are at our fingertips. But what happens when the tech gremlins decide to have a little fun? Thousands of customers experienced just that when they found themselves locked out of Barclays mobile services. It's like when you're all dressed up, ready to go, but then, well, the party's at your neighbour's house and you can't find your keys. Now, of course, you know, if you thought this was a minor blip, think again. The bank's app decided to take a little unscheduled siesta, didn't it? Because it had multiple blackouts during the morning. I mean, admittedly, they've probably been about for the last 10 years or so, so maybe, just maybe, they've gone through a rebellious teenage stage. I mean, who knows? But Down Detector, apparently a trusty online watchdog for website status, didn't waste any time. It received the distress calls with 2,700 complaints pouring in. And of course, you know, Barclays wasn't going to let this pass without a good old apology, were they? And I quote, If you're having problems logging into our online banking right now, we're sorry. Well, isn't that just heartwarming, eh? Especially when you've got to make a really important transfer. But of course, you know, you'll say, what's the problem? Just go down to the bank. Well, we could, Barclays, but the problem is, you and I'm guessing quite a lot of other companies seem to be doing away with them all. So our local bank might end up being about half an hour away or so, rather than the five minutes down the road like it used to be. But of course, they have reassured us that the tech wizards were at hand to fix the issue. But in the meantime, you can still use their automated telephone service. But let's face it, we all know how fun that is, don't we? Possibly, you know, talking to a machine, then being put on hold for umpteen minutes whilst, of course, listening to lift music. But of course the plot thickens, doesn't it? Because that he suggests searching for Barclays service status online. Because yeah, we, we should all have to do that, shouldn't we? Ah yes, the riveting search for the golden status update amidst the sea of other digital treasures. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack, isn't it? Except the haystack is the internet and the needle is the access to your hard-earned cash. But of course it doesn't end there, does it? Because some customers were left high and dry. One poor soul was out there trying to purchase food, but alas, the sum of her money was in her savings account. And meaning, obviously, she couldn't transfer it, I'm guessing. It's like having a wallet stuck in a vendor machine, isn't it? With your favourite snack just inches away. Another customer, of course, needed to transfer money from savers. And let's face it, that cash was probably having a grand old time sunbathing in the savers account while the customer was stuck in the financial equivalent of traffic. Then there, of course, was a third customer who demanded, When will this be resolved? It's not an acceptable situation. And to be honest, I agree with them. But anyway, the article says that Barclays has since confirmed the app and online services have been restored, until the next time I'm guessing, and all their issues have now been fixed. The bank's technical support has replied individually to complaints posted on social media and urged everyone experiencing problems to raise an issue via its feedback form. Well, we're about to talk about the dramatic and electrifying, the heart-pounding daytime soap opera. Yes, you heard that way. Soap operas, those gems of television that everyone falls asleep to. Well, that's just us blokes, I'm guessing, while their wives and girlfriends just love to watch them. With basically no end in sight. Or not, actually, in the case of BBC's apparently beloved Doctors. Now, I know what you're thinking. Soap operas, do people still watch those? Well, apparently, yes, they do. Even those daytime, honoured staples of daytime TV aren't immune to the troubles of modern world. And that is because the BBC's daytime soap Doctors is closing its curtains after a 23-year run. But what's the reason for this sudden exit? Well, the BBC is pointing its fingers to superinflation in drama production and funding challenges. Superinflation, eh? Really? I'm trying to picture a world where the price of drama shoots up in the sky like an overinflated balloon, or maybe worse than supermarket groceries in our shop, because let's face it, that, if anything, is superinflation, isn't it? No doubt, of course, the BBC will probably say something like, oh, we need to keep the costs down because the TV licence has been frozen for so long and we're just not getting any money coming. I mean, what are we to do, eh? Well, BBC, if you actually went the advertising or subscription route, you could be able to get your own money and be able to keep soaps like Doctors, which I'm guessing all two people watch, chugging along for who knows how long. But the thing is, those people who do like the soap surely pay the TV licence and therefore they would like to watch that BBC. Even though I'm guessing the rest of us would rather watch paint dry. But of course, even in the dramatic world of soap operas, budgets matter. Apparently it's just become too expensive to keep this medical drama alive. They needed a major investment to refurbish their sets or a new home altogether. We can't just see the characters out in a tearful farewell scene in front of a demolished GP practice. Goodbye, old clip!
clinic, but the BBC stated with a flat license fee, there we go, the BBC's fund and challenges mean that we have to make tough choices. But you know, don't why? Because the BBC assures us that the funding for doctors will be reinvested into new programming in the region. So who knows, maybe there'll be a new show in the Midlands where the doctors and staff of the GP practice also secretly wrestle with love affairs and long lost family members. Or maybe they might just buy neighbours when Freeview has had enough of it. But you know, who knows, perhaps the next thing might be some sort of big medical drama with a twist. A combination of the accident and emergency room with Love Island or something like that. But anyway, the article says that the show had features a raft of famous characters over the years, including Amelia Clark, who's obviously off Game of Thrones, Claire Foy, Jodie Comer, Alison Hammond, Ruthie Hemshaw, Jill Pasquale, Eddie Redmayne and Sheldon Smith. It has been nominated for five BAFTAs, as well as a raft, apparently, of British awards. It was also nominated for Best Soap, and eight years other prizes at 2023's British Soap Awards, and won the gong for Best On Screen Partnership for Jan Peterson as Karen Hollands and Chris Walker as Rob Hollands. Well, it's time for a masterclass in the world of the scam dance, and leading the dance today is none other than HN Revenue and Customs, HMRC, let's face it, just love to get our tax money, don't they? I mean, picture this, you're minding your own business, maybe, you know, sipping a cup of tea or scrolling through your social media, and then... BAM! You receive a message, an email or phone call saying congratulations, you're the lucky winner. You've been targeted by fraudsters who just can't wait to get their hands on your hard-earned cash. Now of course these folks are often creative, aren't they? I mean they've got more tricks up their sleeves than a magician pulling rappers out of a hat. They're like the modern day Houdinis, except instead of escaping handcuffs they're trying to escape with your wallet. And HMRC, the government tax collectors, have been bombarded with 130 reports of scams in just over a year. And just what is the hot item on the fraud menu? Well, it is fake tax rebates. The audacity of it, eh? They promise you a refund and dangle that financial cut in front of your nose. And what they expect in return? Your personal information, your hard-earned money, and peace of mind. I mean, you name it. Of course, they don't stop there, do they? Because as the self-assessment tax return deadline looms on the horizon in, I don't know, a few months, these scammers are having a field day. I mean, they know the deadline is January 31st, 2024, and they're ready to pounce. I mean, their tactics are probably about as varied as a box of chocolates on Valentine's Day. They'll send you texts, emails, and even ring your phone impersonating government officials. They're like actors in a never-ending play, and their main act is, give us your money or else. It's like Shakespeare meets the digital age, except the tragedy, unfortunately, is real. They're persistent too. I mean, sometimes they'll lure you in with the promises of a tax refund. That sounds so tempting, you'd think you'd won the lottery. But on the other hand, they might take the intimidation route. They'll tell you that the tax police are coming and you'd better pay up. Otherwise, you'll be going to Alcatraz prison. But Myrtle Lloyd, the Director General for Customer Services, steps in as our voice of reason. She tells us to be vigilant and not fall for the act. I mean, her message is clear. If it seems too good to be true or too threatening to handle, it probably is. But anyway, the article says that if you're ever in doubt, you can report any concerning correspondence to HMLC by forward and scam text to 60599 and send in any suspect emails to phishing, spelt with a ph, at hmrc at gov. You can also report any fake calls to HMRC via the government website. And HMRC said it has dealt with 60,000 of these as the tax office will never ask for personal information over the email or phone. I said it already managed to get 25,000 malicious web pages taken down over the last year and contact HMRC directly if you feel like something isn't quite right. But there is some good news, because in this video, it looks like Sadiq Khan will be refunding people over the dreaded ULIS. 